Right folks, so on face value, this will feel like it's the most boring thing ever. And I'm not gonna lie, seafloor cables are not exactly thrilling. But until they appeared on the syllabus, I am gonna confess to you that I was completely wrong about all of the international data. I thought, and I don't know why I thought this, I thought that, you know, if you used your phone or you Googled something, it was all to do with satellites. Well, I was completely wrong. It's very little to do with satellites and much more to do with these seemingly quite boring things that are at the bottom of the sea. So they might not be very interesting, but oh my gosh, they are important. So we need to give them a little bit of respect just for that purpose, really. Uh, here is um, a seafloor cable being laid at a beach. I believe that was in Cornwall somewhere. They're, you know, they're, they're seemingly very kind of, yeah, uninteresting things. But wait for it. Ta-da! 99% of international data is transmitted by wires at the bottom of the ocean called seafloor communications cables or seafloor cables. 99% of international data. Let's just try and imagine a pandemic and a lockdown without that, shall we? Mm. <laughs> they are pretty important. And so when I learned that, I, I was really surprised because like I said, I genuinely thought it was much more to do with satellites. Uh, but the, the reason that it's seafloor cables, as you can see, is it's much, much faster using a seafloor cable, um, up to about eight times faster. Modern life, therefore, ladies and gents, kind of relies on seafloor cables. Um, now, I will show you these in case you um, are not in my class and therefore I won't be able to show you them. This is quite straightforwardly called submarinecablemap.com and you can navigate around the world and you can zoom in and you can see where all of the seafloor cables are. You can... Um, yeah, get quite a lot of detail. Look, Singapore is, <laughs> I think the word might be congested, um, to be perfectly honest. So you can have a look um, at that. This is a video that basically that, that does look, that look is a the same thing, but it does it um, a little bit more interestingly than you just navigating that map on your own. So it's by Science Insider and it's Undersea Cables Power the Internet and it will take you on a tour around the world and show you where all of the seafloor cables are, which is uh, quite interesting. And then um, this is just a very recent cable. So Google's new transatlantic data cable to land in Cornwall. Um, and it might be worth checking I say a few times in these videos, um, it might be worth checking, in fact, it's jogged my memory, that is the new Google cable being laid in Cornwall. Aha. It might just be worth checking um, for any new cables that have appeared because um, one of the great things that I repeatedly mention about geography is that it changes. You know, what I, as soon as I finish one of these videos, to be honest, it becomes out of date. So just have a look, what, what is the latest cable that's been created? Where is it? Are there any new ones in the UK? That kind of thing. Okay, so these, this video will not be very long. This is not difficult stuff. One of the first uh, ideas, once you've accepted that these are pretty important things, the uh, next idea is that different countries have different numbers of cables. Okay, so as you can see, Japan has got 26, the UK has got 54, America 91, but actually there are 19 countries globally who have one cable. There are 11 countries that have two cables. Why do some countries have more cables than others? That's quite an obvious answer, to be perfectly honest with you. You don't need to overthink this at all. <laughs> this is not like anything where you're going to go, oh, wow, that's really surprising. It's like, it's because of that, isn't it? And you're like, yes, yes, it is. So please mull that over, but don't overcomplicate it at all. Um, and hopefully by having a look at that map in front of you, it might kind of trigger you into uh, realising the answer. But anyway, I shall say no more about that. But that's the first thing that the example will want you to know. 
why is it that some countries have more cables than others? What, what is that all to do with? The second thing that we need to know about is that they break. They are, let's be honest, not the kind of thickest, most protected things on the planet. They get broken and they do get broken quite a lot. Uh, greater than a thousand metres, it's usually natural reasons. Um, current abrasion is literally just the force of the water. So that's reasonably rare, but it does happen. Underwater landslides, they are much more frequent than people realise, um, and they break them. And earthquakes, underwater seismic activity. Earthquakes and tsunamis are brilliant at breaking seafloor cables. Um, you might remember seeing or hearing about the 2011 J Japanese earthquake that broke lots of seafloor cables. Um, you will hear people talking about sharks biting them. That seems to be a myth. I've done quite a lot of research into that and I think it's a bit of a, a bit of a lie, to be honest. No one seems to be able to prove that. However, good old humans, in shallow water, most of the faults are to do with uh, fishing, uh, so like dragging your trawler net or dragging your anchor. And as you can see, 70% of the cable breaks are errors, accidents, or possibly deliberate, but we shall see. Now, you only need one example. I've got, I'll just show you um, a few to include. And if you're a Hewish student and you've got a module booklet, you will have a couple more in there. So you just need to pick one that you think, oh, I'll probably remember that because, I don't know, it's a country that you think you'll remember or it's, it's just going to stick in your mind for some reason. So uh, sometimes, as you can see from the first example at the top of the screen, you do get submarine cable being stolen either for the metal that's in them or because they just want to cause problems for other people. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you can get theft of seafloor cables, which is a bit cheeky. Um, Italy, um, it was deliberately cut. No one's quite sure of why, just, I don't know, petty act of vandalism just to be annoying. Who knows? Possibly. Um, we had one in 2016 in the English Channel where a ship dragging its anchor in the wrong place broke three seafloor cables at once. Imagine that if that was you. How embarrassed would you be? Uh-oh. Uh, Mauritania. This is, this is um, it links the kind of two big ideas together. We've established that some countries have more seafloor cables than others, and you may have begun to work out why. Well, here we are in West Africa, and notice that there are a number of countries here where the only cable they've got is this green one. Well, what would happen, ladies and gents, if a fishing boat managed to break it? Well, your entire country would be without um, any of that connection for two days. That's a whole country with no connection for two days. And the other countries that are joined with, with this green country experience outages. One fishing boat, 10 countries. So if you thought that one was bad, <laughs> that one is a bigger mistake to make. Okay, so um, yeah, just pick one. It does. Some people like to have one natural, and the Japanese earthquake example is probably your best, and one human just as a little bit of balance. But um, just to remind you, 70% of cable breaks are caused by humans, and therefore having, having one of them um, probably makes a bit more sense. Finally, um, they are heavily protected um, by the law of the sea. The law of the sea is something created by the United Nations, it divides up who's is what, you know, what, what belongs to whom in the sea. <laughs> Confused myself there. So it talks about the EEZ and the high seas and da da da. And part of that, um, in fact, quite a large chunk of the law of the sea is about the uh, protection of seafloor cables. So it's just to remind you that the law of the sea is quite an important um a bit of global governance to try and keep us all in order. And I thought you might just be interested in this. So it 
would appear that um, in future wars and conflicts, um, seafloor cables might become something that other countries target. So because so much of modern life relies on the internet and phone calls and you know modern technology, that if you really wanted to bring a country to its knees, actually attacking their seafloor cables is probably quite a good strategy. Uh, so this is about talking about how um, the British Navy is uh, beginning to prepare to protect its seafloor cables in the future and it's one of the things uh, that they are really working on. It's quite an old um, article now but have a look, you know, what, what are the predictions for modern warfare in seafloor cables? It's quite interesting. Um, wars are fought clearly in a very different way <laughs> these days. Um, and then that one, mentalfloss.com, it's just kind of facts about the seafloor cables that give you a little bit more information. But like I said, um, they're not the most exciting things you've ever heard of, but by gosh, they're important. Nice, easy video for you today, ladies and gents.